welcome back. We are glad you are still with us. This is still Good Morning Kenya, and we thoroughly appreciate you for making time to be with us this far. The hashtag still remains to be Good Morning Kenya on Twitter at KBC Channel One. Ever remains to be our official station handle. And my handles come K at Jane One Boy across all the social media platforms. And speaking of socials, I'm just going through Twitter and I saw a story about. Um, a Form 3 student who faked his own kidnapping on his way to school to ransom his parents' money to go shopping for new clothes. That will be one of the stories that we'll be talking about tomorrow on our trending topic segment. But for now, we want to come back to studio and have a conversation about our lifestyles item for the day. And today we have one lovely lady with us in studio this morning. There she is on your screens, Catherine Silver. Miss Africa classic, virtual for that matter. Yes. Ooh, you'll be telling us how that has been so far. But in the meantime, talk to us using the hashtags that I've just given you on Twitter at KBC Channel One is also the official station handle. Are you on social media? Yes, I am. We could start there. Give us your social handles. Uh, it's Catherine Silva. Mm -hmm. Catherine with a K. Silva. As long as you search for that, you will see Mrs. Virtual classic Africa. And it's not online. Sylvia because we'll be tempted to <laughs> autocorrect it to I, Sylvia. I was called Sylvia a lot in primary school. Yes, it's Silva. S-I-L-V-A. Catherine with a K. Yes. Catherine with a K and Silva, not Sylvia. So before we get to um, the most recent event that happened over the weekend when you were crowned Miss Africa, uh, Miss Virtual Africa Classic, let's go back. Let's yes. get to know you a bit better. Lovely. Catherine Silva. And especially looking at this line and journey that you are in about modeling, a pageantry, fashion show and all that. Where did all this interest and love stem from? Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, let's go straight into it. it. It stems from what you're driven to do as a person. Mm -hmm. And I've always been someone who wants to assist and help maybe give too much advice, uh, just jump in and always be resourceful. Yeah. And uh, for, for some time I did struggle with that because, you know, um, it's not easy when you're always helping. And then I realized, you know what, if it's the gift that God has given me, it's the gift. Why not run with it? And um, so I am a mother, I am a working woman, mm -hmm. but this is the charity thing that I do. So the pageant is about impact. And it basically started uh, last year. Um, in February. Mm -hmm. So in February uh, I was advised that I am a finalist with this pageant and it's an Africa pageant, it's a national title mm -hmm. and so I am a Mrs. Africa Classic, a finalist but there was also, because a lot was done throughout the year, the virtual pageant came up to award us for what we did for the year. Yeah. So this came up at a time when the pandemic came up and my thoughts were what I came, what can I do to help? Mm -hmm. How can I impact and help our African community and our society? Yeah. So it also started from with my working life. I've done a lot of coaching and mentoring because working with younger uh, girls and boys, supervising them, mm -hmm. you always see so much talent and be like, wow, this one has so much talent, they're brilliant, but... I need they to like teach them a bit of yeah. this and that and this and that. Mm. So it started also from there. Um, and that would go a long way with helping people find jobs, um, advising them on what to do at an interview, and in general in life, mm -hmm. mentoring those that are close to you. Or, yes, because they end up close to you. So it all started from that. And so during the pandemic, um, pandemic was announced. I had written a book, a children's book, and I was like, you know what, this is what I have to give. Mm -hmm. Plus get a donation drive running where people bring what is trash to them that we can bring together and it's a joy to others it's yeah. a luxury for others so it just stemmed from that what can I do to mm -hmm. help and how did this particular pageantry just fit into what you have always loved doing and hoped to do along the way what was it about that was like I want to be part of this like in as much as I start to like you know win of course, hopefully, you wanted Amen. when you were coming through, <laughs> you were hoping to win. But what was it about it that attracted to you to just even wanting to be part of it? The main thing was Africa pageants is about impact. Yeah. So the pageant is about impact and it has all sorts of categories. And it is not about your size, mm -hmm. your height. Uh, you can see I'm not very tall. It's not about your age. It is about the African woman being beautiful in 
all different ways. Mm -hmm. We are all different. We are unique in ourselves. Yes. And so it is about impact. What do you want to do in the society? What do you, what, what are you driven to, to, to maybe fight for? So it is all about that. So within, if you're in the classic category, you have to be married. It's for those who are married. There's a category for those who have been married but are either divorced or widowed, mm -hmm. and different ages and different sizes. So because it's Yes, a, a pageant where there is a section to do with beauty and fashion, and there is also a huge section to do with your portfolio and impact in the community. Mm -hmm. That's what drew me to them. All right. Mm -hmm. And looking at this particular category that you are one of the finalists, yes. um, how did it go in terms of even reassuring you as a person that, you know, when it comes to issues to do with modeling, the way it's considered as such a superficial um, industry, um, you have to be a certain height, you have to have a certain physique. The fact that all that was put aside and you were made to feel like, you know what, there's an opportunity for me and you can imagine how much other women have to struggle with when it comes to this um, line of business or industry that they may love. How was it for you? Uh, for me, that's that's a big part of why I actually even took part yeah. because um, at my age, over 40, I've had two children and my last born is turning to end of this month. Mm -hmm. So this was like post maternity that I'm getting into a pageant. Mm -hmm. I also wanted us ordinary women to just love ourselves for what we are. Yeah. Yeah. There was no time that I'm going to now join a pageant and say, oh my goodness, I need to do surgery. I need to get rid of this and that. I need to be healthy, yes, take mm -hmm. care of myself, yes. but it's to inspire women as well to just love yourselves as you are because a big part of it is uh, we compare and that's how we end up competing and you can't compare. Each one of us is mm -hmm. created in their own way and has their beauty. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's part of it and I think for me growing up, um, I grew up in a, a society for my mom. She's, she's very happy within herself. Yeah. So she's not superficial and she always says, don't use that word ugly. No one is ugly because everyone was created by God. So for me, I was very comfortable in my skin. So I really didn't have to think twice. I was just excited to glam up. But <laughs> what more do we need to do to just change this narrative that exists in as much as we are hoping for a beautiful future, a space where you are not just limited by society because mm. of your appearances, but there's so much more that you have to offer. But then again, the superficialness is something that people have a hard time letting go of. How, what more can we do to just get to that space where even the organizers of these um, pageants mm. are alive to the fact that there's more to it than just beauty? Yeah. Um, well, for example, like this particular pageant, it's, it's very clear when you agree and sign up mm -hmm. what it's about. And th as the pageant is ongoing, they do a lot of coaching and mentoring and teaching you about accepting yourself as you are. Mm. But I think within the society, we can teach our girls a lot. We can uh, teach our girls to love themselves as they are. We can speak to them about, we always blame the media and social media for what is posted, but we can't stop that. Mm -hmm. So it's what we bring up our girls to feel about themselves. It's um, the, the essence we teach them and also what we portray as ourselves yes. as uh, older women. Yeah, if we portray that confidence and let them know I'm happy within my skin and also teach them it's really not only about superficial, mm -hmm. like I said, it's about your health, it's about the essence, what you are doing, what you're growing within yourself. Uh, these are the values we can teach our, our, our girls and leadership as well. From a young age. Yes. They grow with definitely. them. Yeah. All right. Now, um, this pageant has been happening during a year that most people consider to be one of the worst years yes. that we have experienced <laughs> as a race. But in that time, you were also able to get on this drive, the Joy Drop. Yes. Tell us a bit about that. So I created a donation drive, mm -hmm. which is basically people uh, telling me they are clearing out they have stuff they don't need and then I get it picked up from them because most people when you clean out you're like where do I take this stuff mm -hmm. so this stuff is collected it's accumulated and then divided and taken to the relevant homes so for example if there's a lot of baby clothes it goes to a baby's home mm -hmm. um, this donation drive is very exciting because I've had my friends, former colleagues, a group of ladies and gentlemen come together and help me to sort, to go for the donation drives. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's been a real community feel. And it, it has supported children's homes, um, old people's homes, 
shelters for gender-based violence survivors. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is for. So we call them joy drops because when we go on the drop, we're bringing stuff, but you know, we're singing and coaching and mentoring. And I do a book reading and give out the books because my book is actually goes out to charity. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's sold, those donations go to charity. All right. As well. And is this something that, you know, was just happening during uh, the pandemic and in as much as it came at a very good time where most people were struggling with things here and there, um, and especially those who are less fortunate, is this something that? lives beyond the pandemic or what are the plans that you have in regards to yeah, such a drive? It, it started during the pandemic definitely because there was more need mm -hmm. but it will live for a lifetime because there is need post pandemic before pandemic there will always be need in the community mm -hmm. and we always have things that can go to the right people. Yeah. So definitely this will be for a lifetime as part of what I do. All right. Yes. And from what you saw just interacting with the children and the ladies and gentlemen at these different homes, what are some of those things that are essential and people really need that you feel um, in as much as you may as a, maybe a viewer this morning you want to contribute in one way or the other, but you feel this particular items or category of items are what people mostly need in some of these homes. Oh, I, there's so much need, mm -hmm. um, but most definitely, there's the basics, blankets, mm -hmm. mattresses, beddings, those basics, children's homes, diapers, um, there are many of these uh, babies we forget are not breastfeeding because they are orphaned. So formula, mm -hmm. formula for the very small, milk, food items, uh, these are the things that are really needed. There's also a lot of need of menstrual pads. Yeah. There's a lot of need apart from the material things that are needed. There's financial need. Some of these homes are paying rent. They need to pay for electricity, mm -hmm. other utilities. And there's also need for us to be there for time to give your time to go and speak to these children give your time to hold the babies of course right now with the pandemic that's not happening but the need is all rounded but yes there is a lot of need and i would urge people to just give your time or as a family uh, pick uh, a saturday and go to a place of need and just see what you can give and if you can't give anything material you can cook for them for the day yeah yes and how do you go about it is um do you just gather what you get from um volunteers yes. or donations from people do yes. you go with a group of people or um you have a select group of people who you go with or you are open to even allowing companies from different people who just want to be part of the course um, so this donation drive is often on Facebook mm -hmm. my page is public so anyone can be part of the cause so I go about it in that sense I post and say the next donation drive is going to be here we are accumulating items and then anyone can join me because mm -hmm. it's it's public what home we're visiting yeah so anyone can be part of the cause I've even had companies a few companies give items as well which uh, so the cause is not limited to just individuals helping okay yes now you mentioned you were able to put together a children's book mm -hmm. was it also during the pandemic yes or before so the it was just before the main announcement in march i okay. think that's when our disaster happened yeah. in march so this i had just closed with it and published by february end of february received this and i was thinking oh wow i can now do a book launch and what shall i do and then of course in march we didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Why a children's book to start with? Um, so I started with a children's book for a few reasons. First, I wanted to teach children values that we seem to think are lost in the community mm -hmm. and we complain about. We always say, oh, our total, our Jew, this, they don't have this value, that sort of thing. But we need to do something about it because nothing, we, we can't complain. They're not learning certain values, but we need to teach them. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it because I, the, the main character is a cat and her name is Bubbles and I've, I love animals and I've had a lot of cats in my life. <laughs> <laughs> You're the cat lady. So by, by watching them, yeah. um, I, I felt this is a way children would identify to pick a value mm -hmm. when, uh, when, when they're watching a cat then when we lecture them, uh, so to speak. So I used animals as a character and I thought we can teach the values to the community with a light story like this and that's how I went about it all right yes 